key in this ball game for UCLA. Even if he doesn't run the ball early, they get the play action pass off the threat of him running. Deshaun Foster, 42 carries in this game last year as you look at the head coach of the UCLA Bruins, Bob Toledo. As Alabama has won the toss and they have deferred, so Coach Toledo, who is in his sixth season with 35 wins and 23 losses, will get to send his offense on the field first. And Mike, I have to admit, personally, I am as excited about this one as I have been any game in a long time because the weather's going to play a part. The humidity very high, but at least there's not sunshine and killer temperatures for the guys from the West Coast. Possible thunderstorms, but I think these two clubs are extremely closely matched. Ron and I agree, and both of them lack confidence coming off of last year's showing, and both of them feel like they have great football teams, so somebody's going to win here. It's either going to be UCLA or Alabama and start the season on the right note. Tab Perry, number one. You see his numbers, an average of 20 yards, 0.6. Akio Harris is back there with him. As Lane Bearden prepares to kick this one off. But I'll tell you, these folks here in Alabama have been in great anticipation of this for a long time, wanting to see if Coach Fran can do the magic here in Tuscaloosa that he has done at five other schools. Bearden with a foot into the ball. It's a line drive and on the ground. And picked up on the far side line by Perry. 20. Reverses his field. And now is going to be knocked down at the 23-yard line. Let's go to the sideline and check with the third man in our telecast as usual. The big guy, Adrian Karsten. Adrian, Ron, thank you. The good news for UCLA is that their two offensive stars, Corey Paws, the quarterback, and Deshaun Foster, the Heisman Trophy candidate, have fully recovered from their injuries and subsequent operations after last year. The problem is, you need to know, they've had no contact in the spring or now in the summer. That's got Bob Pleto very concerned because until uh, Foster takes a hit on that hand or pause goes down on that shoulder, he doesn't know if they're really in game shape. Time will tell, Ron. Corey Paws last year on the very first play injured the shoulder, stayed for the series, but then he was gone for three more games. Deshaun Foster hit at the line of scrimmage. In fact, he will not have the line of scrimmage as Kimball Moorhead leads the way and Salim Rashid from the middle linebacking spot making the tackle. So the starting lineup, the junior out of New Lenox, Illinois, Corey Paws, 6'2", 218 pounds. He will have as his running backs Deshaun Foster along with Uomia Stansberry. The receivers, Polly Dixon and Perry, Brian Fletcher is the tight end. Second and 11. Foster again, his time into the boundary. Has five, has 10, has the first down as he cuts back into the middle and he's free. He will take it across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Johnson with the tackle, but it is a gain of 20 for the Heisman hopeful. The offensive front, Bolander, Yusef Ifself is the left guard, Troy Denoff is the center, Lehman is the right guard, and Mike Safer, who is said to be the best of the group, out of Hacienda Heights, California, is the right tackle. Monroe, Johnson, King, and Moorhead, the down four. And we'll talk about the linebackers in secondary in just a moment. First and 10, UCLA, the initial first down of the night. Foster again. Not much going, but you can see how hard he is to draw a bead on as they had penetration. Rashid and Ray will wind up making the tackle. Ellis, Rashid, and Daniels are the linebackers for Alabama. Very active group. But here's the question mark as Mike talked about. Keep an eye on Dixon, who is the more experienced, and Herschel Bolden at the corners. Shanta Ray and Reggie Miles are the safeties. Emmanuel White joins Deshaun Foster in the backfield of split backs. Wide receiver to either side. Bama lines up five at the line of scrimmage. They come with the stunt, and the pass over the middle is tipped and could have been intercepted, but Ellis could not get there quickly enough. A lot of different formations by UCLA in the first four plays. The one they had the success with was two tight ends. Deshaun Foster, they're going to show a lot of Deshaun Foster early here. Here's the pass, Corey Paws. It looks like he's drifting back when he throws this ball. Ill-advised pass trying to get the ball to Brian Fletcher, the tight end. It is third down, and the line to make is the 47-yard line of Alabama. This time from a shotgun. 
Hawes swings it out in the flat, and it is thrown a little too hard. And Uremia Stansberry, the intended receiver, and all of a sudden, after a 20-yard run by the Heisman hopeful, Deshaun Foster, they will have to punt. And now they, they've already, Bob Toledo has told his punter, do not kick that ball inside the hash. Just kick it outside the hash, and don't let Freddie Millens return it. First punt of the night. Nate Fixie, you see his average, 43.3. Freddie Mills, the deep man, had a 99-yard return in the second scrimmage of the year for Alabama during the summer camp. Great pass from center, and here's the boot. Off the side of his foot. Horrible kick, and is going to go out of bounds just inside the 30-yard line. Crimson Tide stands to get awfully good field position. That's only 25 yards. That what, that's what happens, Ron, when you have Freddie Millens back there. Kicker tries to kick it inside. The hash kicks it out of bounds. Shall we wait to confirm the starter at quarterback until they come out? And it is number 14, Tyler Watts, the junior out of Pelham. 6'3", 217 pounds, a marketing major, and they come directly to the line of scrimmage. So as they go with a shotgun formation, we'll pick up the remainder of the lineups in just a moment. UCLA with the four-man front. They hand off to Callaway, and he is going to have very short yardage off the left side. So let's meet the other starters along that very young offensive front. First of all, the backs and receivers for the Crimson Tide. Galloway. And Lau are the running backs. Carter and Millen's the wide receiver. We may see as many as eight wide receivers tonight for the Crimson Tide. Terry Jones missed a year because of a knee injury. He's back at tight end. UCLA creeps up with the safety on the sideline. Here they come with the blitz. They pick it up, and now pressure from the interior, and he just throws this one away. The closest man to it, Ken Coker, was coming pell-mell with the pressure. And let's meet the gentleman up front who we're going to have to keep this kind of pressure away. As we said, only 26 starts from this entire offensive unit. Smiley and Britt, brand new. Ephraim, the center, Portis, the right guard, and the veteran is Dante Ellington. He has the most starts. It is Coleman Coker. Leslie and Ball, the defensive front for the Bruins. And the linebackers are very, very good. Check them in a moment. They are led by All-American Robert Thomas in the middle. Third down and seven. Again, they creep up the secondary to the line of scrimmage. And here they come off the corner. They pick him up to the fullback, and he will go to the draw. Tripped up almost to the first down line. And I'll tell you what, with the second effort, he may have gotten it as Dave Ball will make the tackle. Completing those linebackers for UCLA. Thomas, Butkus candidate, Matt Ball, and Ryan Neese is Alabama does get the first down. And in the secondary, Ricky Manning Jr. on the left side, he's only 5'9". Matt Ware is the guy they're going to try to put into the boundary, Mike Godfrey, because he's only a freshman. Big guy, though, 6'3", 200 pounds. And a good player. He'll be on Freddie Millens on this particular play right here. You can imagine what goes through his mind right now with the first down for the Crimson Tide. Each team with one first down of their initial drive. Alabama again from the shotgun. Here comes the option. The pitch coming back. Galloway turns the corner at the 45-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of about five and a line. At the 50-yard line, a marker is down as Matt Ball and Ricky Manning Jr. combine to make the tackle. Going to be a clip against the Crimson Tide. Ron, you can see why the decision's been made to go to Tyler Watts because he's more active on the option. Dennis Francione likes this play. And you have to manage the game at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Watts doing a good job so far getting people set up. Andrew Zal stands on the sideline and watches the play. The senior out of Lake Butler, Florida. You see his number, six touchdowns, but 14 interceptions last year. And probably we will see both quarterbacks here tonight. As Triandis Luke checks into the lineup, top part of your screen, he's number 84. First down at 20 following a clipping penalty. 
And from the shotgun, the quick out pass goes to Sam Collins, gets by one tackle, and then wow, he gets punished by Jason Stevens, the strong safety, a senior out of Highland, California. And again, Alabama trying to spread out UCLA, give them a lot of formations, hit them with quick draws, quick uh, option plays. That was a quick screen to Sam Collins and see if UCLA can tackle after the play. Mike, one of the things we commented on yesterday after watching the UCLA walkthrough, some really great looking athletes on both sides of the football, and you see how the secondary can run. I think this is a good secondary. Now, they're young, so they're going to get tried out here by Alabama. Second down and 18. The line to make is out at midfield. About to go under 10 minutes to play, opening quarter. Makes it to Galloway. He's going to keep it back into the short side of the field. And there again, coming up strong. This is Marcus and Anderson, the senior out of Long Beach, California, who comes up to make a pretty good hit on Tyler Watts. All the old coaches that are watching this game tonight, the 1950s and 40s, when the single wing was in effect. This is single wing. It's a single wing uh, tailback right there, Tyler Watts. He's not a quarterback. He's a single wing running back. Well, right now, his single purpose is to pick up this about 12 to 13 yards because he's got to take it to the 50-yard line. Two rushes, 13 yards for him so far. No score. Each team with a possession. Crimson Tide trying to hold on to this one without having to kick it away. He's changing the play, changing, the, trying to change because... He looked and saw the blitz. Jason Stevens cheating up, so he wanted to get out of the play he was in. So a timeout is called by Alabama, and they and the flag came down. Mike, did they get them? Did he call the timeout, or did they get him for delay? Before the call, timeout, delay they again. They got him for delay against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Ron, this would be a big play for UCLA's defense. Haven't given up to All Tuscaloosa. The... Interesting call coming up right here because add the five yards on. Mike, do you throw the ball downfield and legitimately try to pick up the first down, or do you play it cautiously? Well, I think if you do throw it, you throw it way down the football field. Otherwise, you throw a screen or something real short and hope to get a missed tackle and pick up the first down. Here it comes, third and 18. Watts again in the shotgun formation. You can see Jones, the tight end, moving up in the, into a down situation. Here comes the option. Pitch back comes to Galloway, and there's nothing. Hit first by Stevens, and then he got a lot of help as Chatter comes in to help in a lot of white jerseys around. Well, just think of Dennis Francione's decision. He said, I'm not going to name the quarterback, but you know what? UCLA figured it was going to be Tyler Watson. You can see they worked on the option hard in fall practice. So on that drive, 23 total yards, 21 yards in penalty. So a net two for the Crimson Tide to open the evening. Manning is the deep man. Lane Bearden to punt it away and waits for the snap back at the 16. Very humid night and a packed house here in Tuscaloosa. Anxious to see the coach friend era begin. Gets a good pass, and here's his boot. It's a booming, hanging spiral. Manning on the run of the 36. Ball comes loose. Fight for it. Alabama, no. It's loose again at the 23. The Crimson Tide had recovered it for a moment, and then it squirted loose again off that wet turf. And down at the bottom of the pile, no official signal as yet, but Alabama had a man on the football. UCLA's got the ball. UCLA will be given the ball because they recovered it. Well, just look at the sequence again. Here's what happens. Bounces out, bounces off the Alabama player. And right there, it appeared that the Crimson Tide had it, but it's still loose, and they continue to fight for it. When they get Rick Manning over on the sideline, they're going to tell him, fair catch that football. So the Bruins come up with a 34 yards and a kick and a minus 11 on the return. They scrimmage from their own 24. They fake the reverse. Deshaun Foster carries it into the line. So look for that later as they brought the receiver around. Craig Bragg, number 87, tackled by Daniels. And again, this is the strategy they had last year. As you see Manning on the sideline, I'm sure he'll fair catch if that's the same kind of conditions next time. Same plan they had last year. Run Deshaun Foster and open the passing game up. 
gain of about a half yard in the play. As you look at Foster, as we mentioned, 42 carries in the game last year. But one of the reasons for that, Paz was injured, and they wanted to play it a little close to the vets. Play action. Going to go on top. Does he have a mismatch? He's got Paulie Dixon there, and he can't hold on to the ball at the 25-yard line. And they're working against Gerald Dixon. And this is just what Mike Gottfried was talking about. 5'11 against 6'5. Yeah, you're going to get these shots in the ball game. Brian Polly Dixon, 6'5, as you said, Ron. Gerald Dixon, I know when I talked to the UCLA coaches, they said he's not 5'11. We think he's shorter than that. We played against him last year. Corey Paws throws a nice football up here. It's in the middle of the football field, Brian Polly Dixon just couldn't oh. hold on to that he ball. He has to have this football. That is right in his hands, so nicely thrown and laid out there by Paws. It is third down as Paws is 0 for 3 on the evening. Steps up right over the middle, has this one complete, short of the first down to Ryan Smith. A sophomore who's out of Flower Mound, Texas. It's punting time brewing. But, Ron, they sent a message to Alabama that they're going to throw the ball deep. Now again, Freddie Millen's back. UCLA got to do a better job in punt coverage, and the punter's got to keep the ball pinned inside the hashes to the sideline. Mixie tried to kick it away from Freddie Millens last time. It got a horrible kick off the side of his foot. Let's see what he does as you look at Millen. Good pass, and this time a good kick. Good heavens, he booms it. Millens all way back to the 13-yard line. Here he comes. Breaks by one tackle. Runs into his own man. Then he gets tagged just short of the 25. And there was a flag down at the 17. It is a 50-yard kick and nine on the return. And Seidemann, one of the reserve tight ends, was down to make the tackle. to be a block in the back so a couple of times tonight in important situations Alabama has shot themselves in the foot and now they're going to back it up and take over with poor stadium this evening following the penalty look at this field position inside their own 10 yard line play action he's going to put it on top now going to run at the 10, at the 15, diving for the first down marker, and he might have it as Coleman was the man who knocked him out of bounds. And let's check with Brian Kenny, and it'll be closer in that second ball game than uh, most people would have anticipated. Boise State with only three defensive starters back this year. Numbers on Watts. Three carries for 23 yards. So he moves the sticks. They take it out to the 18 and a half. And a pitch by Galloway, not much there, but he gets by one tackle, gets by a second, and that's a nice regrouping on his part. It'll be a gain of about four. Anthony Fletcher, a reserve defensive tackle who's the number two behind Coker, is the man who came up to make the hit. Ron, I'm sure UCLA, Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, figures he's got a chance to strip Tyler Watts of the ball. He's trying to attack the uh, quarterback, and he's been close to causing a fumble on Tyler Watts. Mike, this could be big right here. He's coming off under his own power, but All-American Robert Thomas, the middle linebacker, is having to come off the field. The trainers had gone out. I don't know if he got a bell rung or what, but they were off the sideline immediately, and we'll try to get a check on him. From Imperial, California, 6'2", 222, a senior. He is uh, on the Butkus list and preseason All-Americans for most all of the teams selected. So Marcus Reese, number 44, checks in replacing him. Reese played in six ball games last year as a starter. Given Freddie Millen's a lot of room out here. Second down and six. Audible at the line of scrimmage. Going to have to hurry. High pass. Watch. He gets belted as he gets it away. Wide open. Carter. He will score. 78 yards.
Thomas to attempt the extra point, trying to make it seven to nothing. As a misfire in the secondary of the Bruins hands the Crimson Tide a 78-yard gift. Extra point is up, and it's good. And with 6.06 left to play until halftime, let's take one more look at the 78-yard home run job. Nobody is there. Nobody came over to take the, the, the wide receiver, Carter, and he'll go 78 for the score. We'll be right back after we pause. Sports Life. ESPN 300万突破おめでとうございます SXW ぜひ見てください見てくんないとじゃあ限っちゃいますよありがとうスポーツファン Alabama 7 to nothing as we begin play in the second quarter. Total yards in that first 15 minutes. UCLA but 35 yards and Alabama with 165. Second down. Line of scrimmage at around the 21 yard line of the Bruins. Galloway is the lone setback with Tyler Watts in a shotgun formation. Gives it to Galloway right up the middle, and he's going to have five yards, maybe six. His knee goes down around the 15. Marcus Reese makes the tackle and on game track. This is what has happened so far. Watts gets the start tonight at quarterback, and we found out quickly why, because Coach Fran loves to run the option, and he is the better of the two at running that cut him off it. Carter, a broken play in the secondary, a gift for the Crimson Tide, a 78-yard touchdown pass. And as we mentioned, the Crimson Tide defense has been there to step up to Deshaun Foster and hold him from nothing really large. Only 35 total yards for all of UCLA's efforts in that first 15 minutes. Well, flags all over the place. You could see on the lower part of the screen, Freddie Millens looked as though he came off the line of scrimmage well ahead of the snap. To the snap. Movement on the offensive line. Be a five yard penalty and we'll repeat third down. Well, now this right here, rather than having a third down and short, your play selection is very different, isn't it, Michael? Yes, but they, they've run the option successful. They've run Tyler Watts out of the uh, uh, shotgun very, very well. You still have Terry Jones there. You, you've got Millens down here. you got Carter down here. So you got a lot of weapons. Four wide receivers as Jones has gone to the sideline. Third down and nine. They need to take it to the UCLA 12-yard line to pick up the first. It's the option play. Galloway gets the pitch. Couldn't get the block because he would have been from behind, but he still gets by Brian Reese. And I don't know why Reese didn't reach up and hit him quicker. No, the pitch was low, and it kept Myrie from getting a good start on that play, or he'd have had the first down. So Neil Thomas to attempt the field goal. And this one is going to come from the 20 yard line or maybe just outside of there. So we're going to say 30 yards is the attempt from the far hash mark. Neil Thomas, his longest in his career is 50. Trying to make it a 10 to nothing ball game. Low pass, but handled well. Then the kick for plenty of distance and he splits him. Jonathan Ritchie, the holder, did a masterful job of getting that one set. And with 13.49 left in the first half, 10 to nothing, Alabama. Studying as this ball game is going on tonight, and uh, I agree with that. Getting off the semester on the right foot. Big Al hit all those A's. 61 yards, 11 plays, 4 minutes, 54 seconds on that opening drive, or the field goal drive just completed by Alabama. Lane Bearden to kick it off.
Gurdon's kick. Good leg into this one. Five yards deep into the end zone, and Perry will not return it. Let's check with Brian Kenny. A lot happening in uh, two clubs that had some really high preseason Billy that living up to that Billy early. Play action. This one in and out of the hands of Paulie Dixon. And this is two balls, one that should have been about a 50-yard gain, and now one that should have been a 12-yard. Adrian Carson, let's go to you. Bad news for the UCLA defense. The first and second string right defensive tackles, both number 97, Ken Coker, who has gone to the locker room with a shoulder problem, and his backup, number 96, Anthony Fletcher, both out of the game right now. Significant run because on that last drive, Alabama was making a ton of yards to the left side of the offensive line. There's a domino effect, of course, now because they have to beg, borrow, and seal from other places on the defense to fill their holes. Yeah, that's right. And the humidity we've talked about tonight and a first time out. So we'll keep an eye on that position. Thanks, Adrian. Swing pass. Foster at the 20, at the 25. Tiptoes as far as he can without going out of bounds. And let's see, they're going to spot him out. Actually, they'll say he is out of bounds at around the 24-yard line. Charlie Jones knocks him out. Really thought this series that UCLA had to open it up a little bit more. They're playing to the strength of Alabama, which is a front seven. They've got to attack the four secondary backs. Brian Polly Dixon missed, dropped two perfectly thrown footballs to him, but uh, Corey Pauls is right on target. You don't want to panic. It's too early to panic. He is extremely accurate. You're right. Crowd coming to their feet. It's third down, and the line to make is the 30. Alabama shows blitz on the outside, and here they come. Pause. Off the mark on this one, looking for Tad Perry. And it'll be punting time again. And as early on as we are in this ballgame, Mike, this is four punts for the Bruins already. Yeah, their offense just isn't in sync. Brian Fletcher, the tight end, was hooking for the first down. He was wide open on this play. You're going to see the tight end. Brian Fletcher, number 81. See how open he is. he got to get to him the football for the first down. Bixie to get his kick away from around the 10-yard line. 10 to nothing, Alabama. And looking for good field position out of this one. Millens is the deep man, and they've got the return on. This is a rocket. Millens retreats. He'll gather it and return from the 23. 25, 30, and to the 35-yard line. Very nice job on the return. 52 on the kick and 11 yards on the return. Well, tomorrow on ESPN2 College Football on Sunday. At home and, uh, no gimme, is Oregon it? Oregon State's going to find out that's a tough place to play. Robert Thomas, the middle linebacker, number eight, checks back into the lineup. As Galloway resets to the right of quarterback Tyler Rocks. And that's where they run the option. The pitch goes to him, and then he gets belted. Coleman is there first, and then finished off by Marcus Anderson. Anderson coming from a family, longtime alumnus of UCLA. His sister, Mike, was a two-time All-American, 400-meter champ. Twice she won that title in the Pac-10, and uh, very, very good athletes there. Ron, he's from Long Beach Poly. Uh, Ty Sidney, the basketball player that dribbled the whole length of the field as Deshaun Foster getting uh, wrapped up here. Getting retaped over there on the sideline. Seven carries now, 31 yards, an average of 4.4. Galloway and Brandon Myrie. The two setbacks with Watts in the shotgun this time. Draw play. A delay to Galloway. He'll take it to the 40. Mike, explain why that has been so successful tonight. UCLA's using a different attack this year on defense. They're Robert drawing Thomas their tackles the up the field. Well, when you bring the tackles up the field, the draw can hit in between them. And that's exactly what's happened to Phil Snow. But also on the outside, by running the option, you stretch this perimeter a bunch, too. So uh, this defense has run this entire ball game, first quarter and a little bit of his second quarter. They've worked in the width of the football field. You can see Anthony Fletcher in that last shot. One of the youngsters Adrian reported on being injured. Obviously back on the field to play right now. And uh, glad to see that. Third down and five. They need to take it out to the 45-yard line. Watch. Sets his shoulders, passes tipped, and that one incomplete to Collins. As just as the ball was thrown, it was a little low as he went across his body. Rusty Williams, number 94, got a hand on it. And Ryan Neese was in a pretty good shape to maybe pick that ball off. It was a little high for him, but uh, Tyler Watts, again, he hasn't made many mistakes today. Second punt of the night. The first one by Lane Bearden, 34 yards. UCLA needs a big play on the special teams of the offense to get them back in this football game. This is Bragg 
who of course is a wide receiver for the Bruins. He's talented. And they've got the return on. This punt is barely going to turn over. Bragg from the 15. Gets a block. Gets a second 30. And one man, as he was about to cut that across and against the grain, 45 and a kick, 21 on the return. And Brooks Daniels makes the tackle. Timeout on the field, 10 to nothing, Alabama. Best starting position for the Bruins tonight as they scrimmage from their own 35. Pause with an audible as he turns and shouts to Deshaun Foster. Gives it to him, tries to bounce off the first tackler, can't do it, and that is McKay Lozier who will come in and make the hit. Ron, when you have a record like that, everybody asks you about what happens to you on the road, and so all of a sudden it becomes a part of your psyche, and everybody thinks all of a sudden maybe we're doing something wrong on the road. They just need a game where they can break this streak and play better on the road. But a this is it, and I'm still going to say this is a very good football team. Yes, Second down and 14. Fake it to Foster this time. Got a man open, put some air under it, and that's a first down. Tad Perry, and he says, throw it to me, and I will catch it. Brian Kenny, an SEC update from Tennessee game open in the overtime. Remember, they threw the ball deep down in the middle. Great-looking guy. Tulane's just a defensive team that's injured. They're very young. They, they really can't stop LSU. LSU has to play them down there next year, right, Mike? Right. There comes that reverse that they set up earlier, and this is Brad the sideline at the 40 and inside the 35 and we talked about it a while Bragg, ago Bragg, the when he handed the ball to Foster after he had faked the ball to Bragg and we said they'd come back with it. You said it Ron and they did come back to it Craig Bragg but you know the blockers didn't do a very good job for UCLA. You always tell the blockers to look downfield. Now watch they stop they slow down a little bit. Number 50 Troy Danoff he slows down go up field and make a block. That would have been the block that's thrown for the touchdown. From the 30-yard line, Alabama leads 10 to nothing. Deepest penetration of the night by UCLA. Play action again up that far side, and this one well overthrown as Ryan Smith is the guy he wanted. Now they're attacking the so-called weakness of Alabama. The weakness is if they have a weakness on defense. I'm not saying it's a weakness, but you're looking at it. Secondary. Gerald Dixon. Reggie Miles, Shantu Ray, Bolton on the other side. They're going to get tried every ball game because this front is so good and the linebackers run so well. You got to go on and challenge the secondary. Second down and ten. Ellis goes out of the ball game in favor of an extra defensive back. Foster has five, headed off at eight, nine, and ten, and it'll be a first down. Nope, I beg your pardon. They're going to spot it down at the 23. Brooks Daniels on the tackle. Adrian Carson, let's check with you. As Deshaun Foster comes out of the game right now, I'll check on a potential injury he has, but a couple things he did to help his game. He retaped, actually took the tape off of that right shoe because of the loose consistency of the field, all the rain we've had, so he could cut a little bit better. Secondly, that left little finger that he had the operation on actually has no movement in it, uh, left run, but they did fuse it so he can get that finger over the nose of the ball and allows it to hold on to it then. Third down. They need to take it to the 20-yard line. Flag is down and contact was made. Oh my goodness, what a mistake. It's first gonna down. be a first down for UCLA and they don't even have to snap it with their All-American running back over here on the sideline. Anthony Bryant. Farther snap. Defense offsides. Five yard penalty. First down. Now contact was made there, but one of the rule changes this year before a defensive guy could come across the line of scrimmage, as you see, he makes contact. But even if you're on the outside, if you come across more than one step, it doesn't matter if you retreat or not. This year, that's offsides as well. Anthony now viewing things from the sideline. First down, Bruins. Akeel Harris is the tailback. They give it to him. Has five, has ten, and it will be first and goal for the UCLA Bruins as Reggie Miles comes up from his free safety spot and makes the tackle, and the Bruins trying to make this a three-point ball game. Ron, twice they've gone to two tight ends and run the counter. When you go to two tight ends, now you get a helmet on a helmet. Now you get a pretty good play. Keel Harris blew it up in there pretty good, too, for backup tailback. That was Mike Safer, number 65, who was out front, who had pulled on the play, making the paving block. Second down. 
as they have spotted it at the 10. They need the eight actually to pick up the first. They give it to the fullback. First man through at the five, and Ewing Stansberry will score it for UCLA. We've got a brand new ball game, a run of 10. Yeah, it's too good a football team on UCLA to, to, to not get back in this football game. Alabama, good defensive football team. The offside, remember that play because oh. that was a third down and three situation that if Alabama stops him, they kick the field goal. Griffith to attempt the extra point as the touchdown scored by Ed Euromia Stansbury, a senior out of El Paso, Texas for UCLA. Good pass, the kick is up, and we got a three-point game with eight and a half minutes left until halftime. Our new score, Alabama 10. Third down, they need to take it to the 45-yard line. Bama leads it 10-7. They popped out of the locker room at halftime with a lot of bounce in their step. We'll see if they can maintain it. From the eye formation, play action again. Smiley out there blocking in front of all knocked down. It's a nice defensive play to the middle linebacker. Let's see, Manning is the man who got out there. Beg your pardon, nine rather than eight. Ricky Manning Jr. And he had a good jump on that ball, maybe almost to the point if he might have gone for the interception. Ron, I'm sure the coaches are going to say to Tyler Watts, hit your tight end. Watch it tight end on, a, on across the middle. It's wide open. Just get him the ball. But he waits too long. Now he throws the ball to the outside. Manning makes a great break on James. Bearden to punt, so it's going to be one, two, three, and out for Alabama to open the second half, unless they come up with some kind of penalty against UCLA here. Very high, very short. Good coverage, good. And a fair catch is called for and made at the 17 by Ricky Manning. 41 yards on that kick, nothing on the return. Ron, here's the series that UCLA really opened it up. They come out and they throw the football. They hit Tam Perry with an out route and they pick up a big first down. And then they come back with a reverse to Bragg. It slows Alabama's defense down. All of a sudden, now the run's there. Then they break the trap up inside for the touchdown. 44 yards rushing on this drive by UCLA. Certainly their best output of the night. If you walk into the living room just joining us, you say, well, those numbers are not real good on pause, but he actually is an excellent young quarterback. He's had a couple drops that were right in the hands, particularly one by Paulie Dixon that would have been at least a 50-yard game. This pass is caught by Perry. Turns it upfield, 25 at the 30. Now, where did he step out of bounds? Around the 32, Reggie Miles will push him out. Adrian Karsten will check with you on the sidelines again. Freddie Millen's experiencing some, some cramps, especially in his right quadricep. He's taking oxygen as we speak. He's a little bit low on liquid, so the weather conditions affecting the special players for Alabama, too. But just one other thought, Ron. Remember, the French, you only wanted him to work hard to affect the play of the other guys on the team. I think this proof pops is that's exactly what he's doing here. Okay, Adrian, 12 minutes, 45 seconds left in this third quarter. Two tight ends, two wide receivers for UCLA, and Mike, you said they'd come back to this formation. Back to it. They went successfully counter play, but Alabama's right there to stop this play. When Foster is the lone setback, it's just like sending out a bulletin saying, everybody come to the left or the right wherever he goes. Moorhead on the tackle. Yeah, Kendall Moorhead is a... If He's a factor in the defense and uh, talked to him on the phone the other day and he talked about his hamstring and last year UCLA game and I said what happened after the game and he said our expectations were so high when we got beat it just took the air out of the balloon and he said we just didn't focus from that point on. Moorhead torn Achilles in 2000 was a preseason all league and all American didn't play last year preseason first team all SEC this year that's the kind of respect he had almost intercepted on a setup screen pass by Gerald Dixon you want air under the ball but not that much air under the no, ball. no sometimes you can screen into man coverage and uh, all of a sudden Deshaun Foster's got a man on him Gerald Dixon was playing screen all the way because
his right legs taken out from under him immediately. That is a great cover by Keith Short. 51 on the punt and of some space, especially Millens and Carter. Well, Millens is going to be the man to the bottom of the screen and Carter to the top. Ron Ray Hudson, a freshman, is in at the running back position. Converted defensive back. He's a freshman out of Montgomery. Big and really, speed. Yeah, has great speed. They fake it to him, trying to go on top looking for Millens, and this one's overthrown by about five yards. A freshman, Matt Ware, was up to the task. You know, he told his mother when he was in the ninth grade, he said, why won't they let me sign with US UCLA right now? He said, I know I'm going to go there. He was a good <laughs> player. As a freshman, he wanted to sign as a freshman. Well, as Mike said, his first start tonight, he is out of Malibu. Freshman in high school, he wanted to sign. <laughs> He's out of the game, and Joe Hunter comes in replacing him, number 22. The ball is handed off and still in the stomach of Myrie. The crowd in the end zone thought that ball had been turned over. You could hear some groans down there, but Myrie came away from it, or with it. Yeah, Tyler Watts looked like he was trying to pull it out. But he rolled it a long way. So it's going to be third down, and they need to take it out to the 19-yard line. All of a sudden, the crowd kind of settling in is sitting on their hands right now because they want to see the Crimson Tide get something going, but this is very poor field position to take chances. They have missed their last five third-down conversions. Hudson again, the setback, number 27. comes the blitz pressure on Watts runs it back into the short side of the field going to be caught from behind by Robert Thomas the middle linebacker what happens here now Ron with the stop on the third down UCLA should end up with very very good field position to take some shots with their offense so following that two yard loss it's going to be fourth down and Bearden, who has uh, done a good job tonight, needs his longest of the evening. Otherwise, Bruins are going to get great field position. Craig Bragg is the lone deep man for UCLA. Spiral is not going to turn over, but the coverage is right there. And now the ball is touched. A flag is down, and that's not going to be a turnover. Alabama has recovered it, but... We know about the halo, and it was not allowed. I think Chris James is the man who is going to be guilty of that. Two flags came down, one from both angles, an official on either side of the play. Crowd's not going to like it. Interfering with the opportunity to catch the football is what they're going to call. That's the 10th penalty on Alabama tonight. 10 penalties, Mike. First ball game, I know, but you can see right there that the Alabama player pushing the blocker, even pushing him, he is within the halo right there. And it was Chris James. figures and penalties against the Crimson Tide in this opening ball game tonight and as a result this is the best starting point that UCLA second best starting point a first best starting point second best field position of the night play action wants to throw long and he's caught from behind by Monroe first time that they've gotten to him tonight and UCLA had single coverage down the field of what they were looking for. Arias Monroe benefits from the fact that Kendall Moorhead's back playing and Kenny King's, King's playing inside. They can't double everybody. And Monroe comes from the outside. And very fortunate Corey Paulus didn't fumble that football. You teach the strip. You see him put both hands on it the minute he felt the backside pressure. Matt Stanley in motion. 
screen pass. Not much there. At the 47-yard line, it'll be stopped. And Brian Kenny, let's check with you. Shockey is the best offensive weapon as a tight end of anybody in the country. Very good tight end. Third down. Going to go long. Far sideline, blown coverage here. Got a man wide open at the 10. It's Perry at the 5 and touchdown UCLA. 53 yards. Thurman Ward is the man who got turned around, Mike. He got caught on the wheel route, Ron. That's a route where the outside receiver comes inside and the inside receiver goes up the boundary. And you, when you get caught in man coverage on that, it's a tough route to defend. So, Euronia Stansberry scored his first career touchdown tonight. Tad Perry, it's his first career touchdown. Griffith to attempt the extra point, and he knocks it home. And all of a sudden, a hush comes over this partisan house here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, as we take a look one more time. Ron, here's what's going to happen inside, down the boundary, in the man coverage. And it's just a busted coverage by Alabama. If it's a man coverage, then Thurman Ward didn't have number one, Tab Perry. So, tit for tat. Two grown coverages, and both teams have a touchdown as a result. We'll be right back. That's Ward, the youngster that got caught in that dilemma a moment ago. As this kickoff is returnable, probably the three, Freddie Millers. 15. He gets collapsed on at the 25. Well, tomorrow night, Eddie Evans left in the third. Galloway back at a tailback. Well, Watts is going to hold on to this one. And he's going to pay for it as Leslie, Rodney Leslie, number 73. Now, Mike explained to us it has been Watts that came off of him because he knew he wanted to throw the ball. Now, it was Alabama trying to cross him up a bit by because if he doesn't turn up field, he just brings it long. He's playing into the defense's hands. Yeah, he, anytime you stretch an option out to the sideline, the defense benefits, so you got to make a decision a little quicker. Tyler Watts. I don't think he's played bad. I, I think no. the game plan has been built around his running ability. Ray Hudson comes back into the lineup along with Galloway. I'd say this series, though, if they don't move the ball, you're going to see Andrew Zal because he brings in a different package. Prior to snap, movement, offensive line, five-yard penalty, still second down. And in fair fairness to Tyler Watts, his team's penalties have hurt his oh, offense. Mike, yeah. that's 11 penalties uh, that uh, Alabama has received tonight. 11 penalties. And I'm sure that the new head coach... You mentioned early on that those kind of things, that's not his kind of football, but I'm sure that's one of the things he's most disappointed in in this opening game. No penalties against UCLA. Watts back into the boundary, throws it. He was out of bounds when he delivered the ball. Heavy pressure that time by Rodney Leslie again. And he lost yardage because he did step out of bounds before he threw it. Ron, it's a tough throw when you're going to the left. And the right-handed quarterback, you got to square your shoulders. And he, again, he was strung out too far. Freddie Millens may come in to quarterback here. No, nope. Tyler Watts still in there. Thought he was going to go off the sideline. This is a big down for Tyler Watts here. has missed their last six third down attempts and there's movement they jump off sides and another five yards looks like Terry Jones came off the ball too quickly as did their receiver at the top of the screen prior to snap movement offensive line five yard penalty still third down Excellent opportunity here for UCLA defensively. Turnover wise, come after Tyler Watts. See what kind of play call Les Kenny, the offensive coordinator, calls here. Watts steps. 
steps up, drills ball way too hard. Tipped and it's intercepted as Mike Sand at the 20. And back inside the 20 yard line, Ricky Manning Jr. after the ball was thrown extremely hard and it went through the receiver's hands and was picked off. Ron, that's what you want to do if you're UCLA. Now Tyler Watts, good running quarterback, got a good arm, but that's the kind of situation you want to put him in to get a turnover. The first of the night for Alabama. Watch how hard he throws this, Mike. Yeah, bump and run coverage. He's trying to get the ball to the back out of the backfield. He tips it. You know what? Sam Collins tips it. Uh, the interception. I think he was throwing to Collins. I don't think he was throwing to that back. Yeah, I believe you're right. He didn't put enough air on Mike Galloway. Got his hands on it. Yeah. Now Alabama's defense really got to answer the call. Perry in motion. But they give it to Foster. Blocker in front. Will turn the corner, but not for much. Maybe a couple. Defensively, Charles Jones, a sophomore out of Waynesboro, Georgia, is out there to bump him out. Ron, Wayne Bacon, number 24, did exactly what Carl Torbush would want him to do. He took all the blocking out. Watch number 24 come up here. Strong safety. Takes on the tight end. Now he takes on the fullback. Now he strips all blockers. So Deshaun Foster's taken down. Excellent job by Bacon. Doesn't go in the official statistics, but you're exactly right. He set up his teammates and was very unselfish. Second down and eight for the Brewers. Quick pass this time, and it is incomplete as Polly Dixon has dropped three tonight. I, hard to figure on him. Great athlete, great ability. Three drop balls tonight, and that one was a little bit low, but that's a situation where you got to come up with that. Ron, anytime you get in the short yard here inside the red zone, you better keep your eye on the tight end, 81. Brian Fletcher right over here. Well, he's out on pattern. Pa's running for his life, and is going to be stopped at the 13-yard line. And you know what? Fletcher did get released. He was open in the end zone, was he? He was open in the rush. Kendall Moorhead didn't allow him. Corey paused to set up, but you watch the tight end. He stops and then goes wide open. Oh, my goodness. Wide open. He's the last man uh, standing there. And one of the things that the Alabama coaches talked about was the vertical game with the tight ends. UCLA does as good a job as anybody around. It's going to be a 30-yard attempt by Griffith. Good pass, plenty of distance, and he's got it. So 6.45 left in the third quarter, and our new score, UCLA. A few hundred thousand people down here in uh, this part of the world that agree with that. 17-10, to 10, UCLA with a one touchdown and extra point lead. And here's the kick. Millens goes to the four yards deep in the end zone. Probably a very wise thing. Ron, it's a long season. Dennis Francione's got some choices to make here. I, I, you stay with Tyler Watts because you don't want to break his spirit in this first game either because he's played well at times in this ballgame. Well, the first thing the UCLA coaches did after their walkthrough yesterday was head down the street to the Bryant Museum. Fans, players, and coaches all had the utmost respect and appreciation for the Bears. Well, it's going to be Watts. Said, you gotta make sure that you don't douse his spirits. See what he comes up with. Option play. They get pressure. Pitch back goes to Galloway. Five, close to ten yards. Tough run as he put a shoulder down. Robert Thomas hit him, but he could only bump Coach Toledo, though. He is a, a classy guy. Option to the other side. This time it's Hudson. And Hudson gets by the first tackler, will not get by Jason Stevens. And another SEC update. Brian Kenny, how's it going? Watch him, Mike Gottfried. Watch him. I know they, they are the preseason pick last in the West. Ball is fumbled and it's recovered by Watts. But Ole Miss won't finish last in the West. I'm sorry. I, they're no, too I good saw on offense. The, team the other day that, uh, you know, that has struggled a little bit. But I, I think Ole Miss is going to be all right. The only question on them is defense. Right. They get strong back, the middle linebacker, and uh, that will help tremendously. But they're not real muscle, muscle kind of people up front on the down four. 
Second down and 11. Line to make is out at the 45 for Alabama. High pass, but he gathers it in. And now pressure for the inside, so he runs it the other way. Hit at the 40 and spins forward. Tyler wants. Tyler is there to make the tackle. That's what Tyler Wise can yards. do for you. Turn a bad play into a good play. Drop back quarterbacks can't do that because they're going to look to throw the ball because they don't have enough speed to get outside. Zao continues to pace the sideline and now a very big down right here with a third down at about three for the Crimson Tide if they want to keep this drive going. Michael James is the man at the top of the screen. Hudson is the tailback. Whistles and a timeout is called by UCLA. Timeout. So 518 UCLA. remaining third quarter. There's the option. This is Hudson. Turns the corner plus some. And there you see the speed by Hudson. He was a defensive back and they moved him to offense to give him a little bit more burst. And he's got 14 yards in the play. Ron, you, if you're going to be a receiver in this offense for Alabama, you got to block. And, and you got to block on option plays. And they did a good job. You watch them seal down here. There's a good block there, and there's a good block inside. And it opens it up for Ray Hudson to pick up the first down. So you got to block on the outside in Dre, this Alabama attack. Dre Fulgham, number three, the sophomore out of Montevello, Alabama, is the man you saw there first. Quick out pass. It is caught and tackled immediately Antonio Carter. Well, I guess he thought he saw something defensively. Ricky Manning Jr. was there to make the stop. Yeah, Brandon Chiller, the linebacker, really jumped too soon. He was in the path of that ball, but uh, jumped a little bit too soon uh, to be any factor. Good drive by Tyler Watts right here. Nice drive, nice play calling at the line of scrimmage. Under five minutes to play now. Ray Hudson again, the setback for Alabama. You see him creeping up on the corner. The blitz comes, and that pass, he's got him open, and he overthrew Michael James. Ron, what do you have to like if you're Dennis Francione? Now, you, you don't like that one because you have so many chances in a ball game. But Tyler Watts gets him in the right play. He's, he gets the right receiver the ball. He gets the right running call. He knows it's a blitz. He tries to get the ball to Michael James. He just throws it out a little bit too far. But he's right in the offense. Third down and five. They need to take it to the UCLA 35. And he's going to run it uncovered. He'll have the first down easily. That time there was nobody there to take the quarterback, only the trail back. And Reese makes the tackle. Mike, talk about a situation that Alabama has with when the quarterback comes to the line of scrimmage, he might even have three plays that have been called. And how in the world do they get the message to everybody? Ron, he'll have three or four plays. They'll school the quarterback. They'll say in this front, in this coverage, I want this play. So he'll take four plays up based on what UCLA shows him. He'll make the call right at the line of scrimmage, get everybody in the right spot and run the play. The best percentage play. Galloway checks back into the lineup at tailback. It's the ninth play of the drive. They reverse. Get it back out to Galloway. Not much there. Good job. Kenyon Coleman is the first man to get out there. Kenyon, of course, a senior out of Alta Loma. And played for a year and a half. He got hurt in the third game last year. Yeah, at the University of Michigan. Yeah, and this is a youngster that could have gone to the NFL and decided that he wanted to come back for this 2001 season. No spring practice, and uh, he's going to be an All-American defensive end. Coleman, six tackles on the night. 19 for a loss, eight sacks in his career. They're going to set up the reverse. Ball is fumbled. And the UCLA will have the recovery. That's Rodney Leslie. And for a moment, I thought he had made a mistake because rather than recovering, he tried to pick it up. But then he made the recovery. Ron, this, this is a big mistake for Alabama's offense. And this is the kind of play at this field position where you take the home run shot right now. Bob Toledo on offensive coach. There's the fumble right there. He broke up. Or disrupted the play and then makes the Make recovery. The, made the recovery. This is a dangerous situation for Alabama's defense because they may take the shot down the football field, find your fastest wide receiver, probably Tab Perry, 
number one, send him down the football field. So now two turnovers in the ball game to go along with those 12 penalties for the Crimson Tide. And they lose a wonderful opportunity. Ten plays, 47 yards. They ate up three and a half minutes, and they come up with the turnover. Let's see if they go downtown here. They go through the throat. Tied games up at the line of scrimmage. And they come with the end around. Brad. Nice defensive play by Bacon, number 24. Brian Kenny, let's check with you again. Second down and 11. Quick out pass, got a complete, has a blocker in front. This is Perry. Oh, and he's face masked down. And I don't see a flag. No, here comes one. And that can't be incidental. He was tackled by the face mask by Wayne Bacon. Gain of 20 yards, and there should be 15 added on to this one. Tab Perry's one of those kind of receivers that just scares you if you're a defensive coach. 6'4", 225, strong, physical, has great speed, quickness. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to argue with officials, particularly in the second game. He tackled him with a face mask. That is an under that's 15-yard penalty. <laughs> There he comes right there, and he turns his head completely around and makes the tackle with it. That's the reason the penalty is enforced the way it is, but only a five-yarder stepped off. 16 seconds on the play clock. Play action. Locks it for the end zone. Got a man down there. Caught by Foster, but he caught it out of bounds. Nice job defensively. Wortham was there. Just let it drift a little too much. Yeah, and that's a tough call for Cornelius Wortham. He's got to run with the running back. He's got to take the fake first. He's got to step up. Now he doesn't know whether he's got the football or not. Now he knows he doesn't. He has to run with Deshaun Foster down that sideline. He was well out of bounds, and as you could see, also was well covered. And as Mike said, extremely difficult for a fellow who plays his position against a speedy running back with isolation. Second down and 10. Don't forget Brian Fletcher down here. The tight end was open the last time. They got him blocking on this play, though, as he goes straight ahead with Foster. No, it's William Manuel White, the freshman out of Canyon Country. 6'3", 241. This is big for Carl Torbush right here, this third down. Got to turn him away here. Carl is successful wherever he's been. The Carl's record when he was the defensive coordinator at North Carolina was very, very good and consistently good every year. Third down, they need to take it all the way to the 20 yard line. Throws this one incomplete at the 21. Craig Bragg, the intended receiver, and it was Gerald Dixon who had to cover. Good job by Gerald Dixon breaking on the football. They showed the wheel route that they scored a touchdown on, but then curled the outside receiver. Gerald Dixon read it right away. Griffin to attempt this uh, field goal. It's going to be an attempt of 45 yards. His longest, 48 against Oregon in 1999. From the far hash mark. Good pass, plenty of distance. And he got it. And for the 4,000 that traveled from the West Coast down in the end zone to our left, they are standing and cheering at the blue and gold. And with one minute and 23 seconds left to play in the third quarter, it is UCLA 20 and Alabama 10. Ron, here's the third down play where they tried to catch him. They tried to curl and then to run the wheel, but stop right here. And that's... Alabama plays it real well, Gerald Dixon. Now they think the wheel's coming. They scored on the wheel where he went right on down the field. Now he pulls up, open, but Corey Paws doesn't get the ball, and then Gerald Dixon breaks and punches it away. Ball was just a little bit late, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Brian Tickets left third quarter. This is going to be Millen. 
Jackson at the goal line. At the 10. At the 20. Still on his feet. You better get him now. All the way back across midfield. Devon Reese finally makes the tackle after a 51-yard return. We're coming up later on ESPN at Sports Center. John Anderson and Rich Eisen. Phillies in first. Paterno chasing the bear. And Capriati looks for an opening. Catch all the base highlights and scores. And for more, log on to ESPN.com. Ron, a lot of times on your special teams, especially your kickoff team, a lot of defensive backs and linebackers, they may have been tired chasing this option attack, and Freddie Mullins takes advantage of that. Certainly good field position for the Crimson Tide. Watts keeps the football. That's Leslie, number 77, in the middle of the line, along with Kenyon Coleman making the tackle for UCLA. And also Robert Thomas is down there. You can hear some scattered boos from the crowd. They want him to open it up right now. Well, they're playing within their system right now, and they've got a lot of time. they still got another quarter to go here. So Tyler Watts just did the fumble. They had a nice drive going the last time, and then yeah. reversing the fumble. Three and a half minutes, 47 yeah, yards on that doing drive. well, and they're attacking UCLA the right way. Here's the option, pitches it back. This time it's Galloway, not much doing. You can see Hudson was in the backfield, and the crowd doesn't like this. They, again, want to see a little bit more open with the play, but as Mike explained, it's you got the system, you got to stick with it. Coleman and Stevens combining on the stop. I'd say the honeymoon's over. <laughs> it's a short one. Well, just remember this. Bear lost his first one. Bear did. This ball game is a long way from over as we now have come to the end of the third quarter. He's still got plenty of time. He's got 15 minutes to record his first victory here in Tuscaloosa. So we head to the fourth and final period. We'll take a timeout with the score. UCLA 20 and Alabama 10. マチーナターメントのシーズンがいよいよ到来。そしてもちろん City House here in Tuscaloosa 20 to 10 as we start the fourth quarter UCLA the number 15th ranked team in the preseason leading the homestanding Crimson Tide Ron a good matchup right here to watch Antonio Carter against Joe Hunter way at the top of the screen pressure inside sets the throw and throws it back to this side of the field caught by Mullins and he's bumped out of bounds at around the 21-yard line. Well, that ball was thrown perfectly. Ricky Manning Jr. against Freddie Millens all night. They've been battling each other. Freddie Millens wins on this one. Flag is down, and we'll uh, we'll check the flag. Offsides on the defense. And already Matt wears down the starting corner. Ricky Manning may be hurt. And uh, great job by Tyler Watts. Here's Freddie Millens getting off the ball. Ricky Manning putting his hand out. Just good concentration by Freddie Millens. Well, we'll get a report and see exactly what the injury is. Ricky Manning Jr., that's, uh, well, that's cramps. You can see he's standing up asking him to massage the calves at a timeout. He's called by Alabama. So we'll take it with him in just a moment. Cramps for UCLA. Quick pass as the whistles 
And a flag is down. Antonio Carter caught it immediately. Ron, they're going to attack both these backup corners now. You got Joe Hunter, 22, and a freshman, Matthew Clark, at both corners now. Prior to the snap, movement, offensive line, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Adrian, what do you have on the cramping situation on the near sideline? The cramping that occurs simply because you lose all the electrolytes in the fluids in your system, Ron, because of the humidity. Matt Ware back out of the locker room after an intravenous uh, situation he had to go through in there. Ricky Manning Jr. talked the trainers out of having to go into the locker room. So the man replacing those two was third string at this point with Alabama driving very uh, severe situations as far as conditioning is concerned for UCLA. Okay, that is the 14th penalty, by the way, against Alabama. 87 yards. He wants to throw back to the opposite side. Now it breaks down. He'll run it. At the 20, at the 15, runs it with his own man and then gets smacked down by Joe Hunter. Gain of 15 on the play, and it is very close to another first down. The chains are all the way across the field, and they're going to call a timeout to bring them in and measure. They're trying to go right to Joe Hunter. They got Anthony Carter on the post pattern. Tyler Watts pulls it down and runs, runs for the uh, first down, but they're going to work on those two corners. Watts. 12 carries, 72 yards, and Ricky Manning Jr. back in the lineup, bottom of your screen. He's lined up against Millens, but it's a running play that goes inside to Galloway. He'll pick up about three. Bryant Kenny, let's check with you in the Pac-10. Yes, Ron, Oregon, and with at home, and uh, they got a good one brewing out there, just as we do here with the Bruins of UCLA and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Option play back into the short side of the field. Watch his hit as he goes inside the five. That's Ryan Neese, the senior out of San Bernardino. Inside the weak the side linebacker, line. and his headgear came off, but he's, he's okay. Just think of the number of hits Tyler Watts has taken tonight. Gives you a little bit of idea how tough he is. On the option, he's run the option all day. He's run the uh, quarterback draw. He's throwing the ball under pressure. He's taking a lot of hits. Nice coming off the field. It looks like he took a shot to the stomach. And Reese, number 44, will come in replacing him. Third down. They need the one-yard line. Option back to the open side. Watch. He will keep it. He's going to be hit by Reese and driven back. And a lot of help from his friends right there. Now the spotting of the football from where that linesman has come in, Mike, he doesn't have it. No, and this is a decision that uh, Coach Francione is going to have to make here, whether to take the three and go behind seven or go for the go for the uh, first down. But they're going to kick the field goal. Clock running, 12 and a half minutes remaining in the ball game, and we will see if Neil Thomas will, in fact, attempt a field goal which will actually be shorter down by 10. It is fourth down. They need just over a half yard. The option play, Galloway for the corner. Boy, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that is a great spot because <laughs> Manning, Ricky Manning Jr. forced him out of bounds. Coach Francione did not think they had it, but the, the spotting was very, very favorable, and a timeout now has been called. When you run in the option like that, you stretch the field, and uh, UCLA did a pretty good job on that play. UCLA holds. Galloway was so very close. You could see him leaning. See the play when he gets the pitch, Ron, there's too many people outside not blocked. Great effort by Ricky Manning Jr. as he stretches for that first down. Brandon Chiler is the man who got underneath it. Now here's the second part of this. You, you make the decision to go for the touchdown. You, you throw off the field goal. Now your defense has to come up with a stop. Three plays and out. And you're right back down again. Student section, part of it right behind the quarterback. Favorable situation for the Alabama defense. Paz going to go on top, and he's going to go long. Got single coverage, and the ball is tipped, and I'll tell you, Perry was there. What a great play by Roberto McBride. 
Otherwise, that's 99 yeah. yards and six. A lot of coaches like to throw out of their end zone. You, you figure defense is going to expect to run. You look to play action. You go for the bomb. Now you've got to get it out of there. Great job by McBride. As you could see, but that replay, great shot, guys. I mean, he played it wonderfully, but if he was two inches shorter, that would have been 99 yards and a touchdown. Pause, 7 of 20, 113 yards and one touchdown. Foster will take it to the four. Ryan Kenny, let's check with you again. More scores tonight. Third down and eight. Quick pass, look at, oh, how dangerous. As Deshaun Foster was thinking about where he was going to run and that ball being tipped. Now the defense did what they were supposed to do. Now the special teams, Freddie Millen's got to get it right back down here. And then the gamble is a gamble. You you win or you lose on that kind of gamble. Dennis Francione, I still think he made the right play. Tell you what, right decision. And pause his credit. He's had a lot of drop balls tonight. Funny. Dixon has Without dropped three. Foster right there dropped one, and a couple of others have been uh, mishandled. Millens and Carter back in a dual safety. They're able to make sure they get a return out of this. Well, somebody threw some cups out of the field. That's the reason for the stoppage. 1 11 left in the ball game. Bixie nine yards deep in the end zone. Almost blocked. End over end. Bounces away from Millens. Oh, my goodness. Alabama's going to lose some yardage on this. Fair catch, impossible. The coaches were hollering for it, but he couldn't get there, and it took a big UCLA bounce. Well, tomorrow night at ESPN 2 at 9.30, it's college football on Saturday night. Heisman hopeful Ken Simonton leads number 12 Oregon State against Fresno State. And, of course, the Bulldogs opened up with that upset over Colorado last week. David Carr threw for a touchdown, and he ran for another. And for more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Rodney Gilmore told me last week that Fresno has eight or nine pro prospects, so that's a pretty good all-around team. That ball game tomorrow night, Sunday. Quick pass. Carter, boy, as soon as he caught it right there, was Ricky Manning Jr. Pretty good corner, Ron. He is, and particularly for a guy that is not even 5'10", yep. but if we talked about how muscular, and what he has done, he's taken a situation where he knows he has to be able to play very strong with his arms because he does give up height. Very good ball skills. Very good at breaking on the ball. Where, Matt, where, the freshman still out. They would have looked like a war zone over there a while ago. The number of kids suffering from cramps by UCLA. Lops this one, has it complete. And they're going to give him progress to the 35. That's an Alabama first down, gain of 11. Ron, Joe Hunter's where I would go because Ricky Manning is an experienced quarter. Joe Hunter's a backup. Uh, Matt Ware's out. He, he, he was the freshman starter. And get some Freddie Millens. Uh, Freddie Millens is always going to be on Manning. So Antonio Carter, you can get on Joe Hunter. And last catch by Triandos Luke, a sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama. Watts throws back across the offense, and Collins was there. And they're going against the guy you're yeah. talking about, but he just missed him. Adrian Karsten down on the sideline. What's your report? At Jason McCadley, number 80 for Alabama, to the revolving door of cramping. Difficult for Tyler Watts now, and he complained about the last time out of the game. The more the special league positions get the cramps, the more they have to rotate the athletes in. So he's not sure just exactly who's in the game from play to play. The guy he wants to throw to wrong. <laughs> That's a great point. Three wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. And they fake the run to Galloway. He goes back up into the line of scrimmage. Nothing. Robert Thomas. The preseason all everything and middle linebacker for the Bruins is here to mess up that play. And you know, Mike, but what's happening right here? Alabama had the long drive. They don't score any points, but now UCLA gets the ball back and uh, or Alabama gets the ball back and, and that defense right back out yeah. on the field, lending they're, itself to more cramps. Yeah, they're not doing it. This is so important a drive for Alabama uh, to misfire on two plays. Third down. They need to take it to the 25. Watts being hit, and he's going to be sacked at the 43-yard line. Dave Ball 
Hall, one of the first men to get there, along with 92 Steve Morgan. Ricky Manning, Ron, is laying on the football field on the 20-yard line. Now, he was covering Sean, Sam Collins, the wide receiver, and they tried to go after Ricky Manning, but he was up for the uh, play. And I don't think... I don't think uh, Ricky is hurt. I mean, he's hurting, but you see, it's uh, it's cramps. He's gone off the field a couple of times already, and as Adrian reported, both sides, it is so humid tonight, the temperature did not get that high as you look at Manning right here trying to recover against Collins, and he just falls down. Fell down, but by that time, Tyler Watts was already being sacked. I don't know if you've ever cramped before, but particularly after it's happened once and you continue. Well, Bowling Green did beat Missouri, so uh, the Mid-American has knocked off the Big Ten, and they've now knocked off the Big 12. How about Middle Tennessee knocking off the SEC? That's so uh, Wright Waters is sitting somewhere, and the Sun Belt's off to a big start. And quite frankly, Arkansas was extremely fortunate mm -hmm. to have not gotten knocked off as well. And Matt Ware's coming back on the field, Ron, the freshman. Manny being helped off. And a reminder, it's time for you, the viewers, to go online and help us select tonight's player. Because, uh, everybody, this has been a well-played football game. Yeah, it has been. It's just the kind of game that we thought we would have. A lot of penalties by Alabama, which has hurt them. And the two turnovers. Under nine minutes to play in the ball game. Bragg is the deep man, and here's the kick. Good coverage kick. Very, very high. And UCLA just simply runs away from it, and that is down at the one yard line. 40 yards on the kick. And Chris James is the man who got there and touched it dead. So Mike, this is two series in a row offensively that UCLA will open up at their own one-yard line. Yeah, Alabama's defense got to get a turnover down here, Ron, or get this ball turned back at three plays. They've got 8.49 on the clock, but they've spent two timeouts, so they only got one timeout left in the second half. Again, the students right behind that UCLA offense standing, cheering, waving those pom-poms, trying to distract Corey Pauls. They give it to the big fullback, though, and Ed Uramia Stansberry will take it out to the three-and-a-half-yard line, and Wayne Bacon makes the tackle on him. Really thought the fourth quarter advantage would be Alabama. Because, of the, because of the heat and humidity. But it, UCLA offensively seems to have a lot of wind still left in their sail. The defense, I think, uh, has... Is primed uh, if Alabama can take it to him. Brian Pauley Dixon, no receptions, no yards. He does have three drops tonight, but he has been a non factor. This pass goes the other way, and it's caught by Perry, and Perry turns it upfield, and that's going to be enough for the first down as we go back and check with Brian Kenny again. <laughs> Got look like the big pickles tonight with that all green home uniform. Yeah, where's the defense in that ball game? Wake Forest beat East Carolina tonight. 20 to 10, our score. And this is Foster. He'll take it back into the boundary, and I'm sure that's not what Bob Toledo wanted to do, is uh, to stop Foster. the clock. Wortham pushes him out. Youssef Ifsef, who was making his first start tonight, a sophomore out of Los Angeles, comes back to pick up his, his headgear. His family uh, from Russia. Second and six. From the uh, Russian Orthodox. He uh, wants to have a career in sports medicine. And his favorite subject, and this tells me something about how good a student he is, he likes chemistry better than anything else he takes. So far, this UCLA team has had just that. Good chemistry tonight. Second down and six. As they scrimmage from the 18-yard line, here's Foster. Runs it up in there. Bangs it to the outside. Has five. Has ten. And he's loose into the secondary at midfield and still on his feet. Wisely stays inbounds and then can't get any more and he goes down. Boy, what a huge 
Huge play right there by Foster. 40 yards. Ron, if there's a better back in America, I don't know who it would be because Deshaun Foster in this ball game has taken a punishment, still runs, runs up in there, keeps his feet moving, which would take teach backs. Good block by Polly Dixon. Brian Polly Dixon out on the outside. He wisely goes right down. So he had no more, stayed inbounds to keep the, I know it stops when the chains are moved, but now the clock is back in operation, running with seven minutes and 35 seconds. And Manuel White has come in replacing him at tailback. And they give it to White. Banged hard at the line of scrimmage. That's uh, Anthony Bryant after a gain of a couple. Corey Pauls has had a good second half. Remember, we talked about he had 23 passing yards in the first half. Done a better job here in the second half with the passing game. Of course, that number 26, Deshaun Foster, helps a lot. But 100 yards passing here in the second half. You know, and, and also about Foster, in the first half, in case you missed it, he had bruised ribs, and that's very tough. You talk about receiving a punishment, as Mike mentioned, and then to stay in the ball game, that's very difficult. This is Foster again. Pushes the man aside. He was trying to make the tackle, and then it's Reggie Miles if he just stiff-armed right on down the field. I've, I'll say this, Ron, and I, and I believe this coming into this football game. UCLA is one of the best five teams in the country. They've got a lot of offensive weapons, a lot of speed on the outside. They, they got a very good quarterback in Corey Paws, a very good tight end, Brian Fletcher, excellent running back in Deshaun Foster, and they got a lot of good defensive players. They just have been beaten down, and uh, if they get a win here in the last 645, this is a team that will contend for the national title. Third down and short, and it's White. Oh, boy, he takes quite a lick. I don't know if he got that first down or not. Uh, I believe he did. And then he really got punished. Victor Ellis, along with uh, Salim Rashid, combining to make the tackle for Alabama. And all white the ball carrier. Brooks Daniels and Salim Rashid. No, not, it does not appear from where that ball is spotted that he's going to have the first down. Do you think? No. One thing that makes it tough on a Pac-10 team to win a national title is they, they schedule, they only have six home games. You take the SEC, 10 of their 12 teams in the league have seven or more home games. If they're not going to have it, so it's going to be third down. I know they're probably going to go with the running play, but again, Mike keeps mentioning Fletcher, the tight end. His brother is Terrell, who is a running back for the San Diego Chargers. He has great athletic ability, and he is a big target. Eighth play of the drive. It started at the UCLA one. And the highlight of the drive was a 40-yard breakaway run by Deshaun Foster, kicking his way after he got stopped at the line of scrimmage, bounced back out. Fourth down, less than a yard. And contact was made at the line of scrimmage. Throw offside. Jared Johnson. And that's too easy for Alabama to give them a first Five down snap. like that. Defense. Offsides. Five yard penalty. First down. So twice it's happened, and that is 15 penalties on the night. Kenny King on the inside moving. Coach Fran paces the sideline. No place to go, and he's just going to go down. Deshaun Foster still being pushed back. Rashid has a hold of him, and they're going to say forward progress was stopped at about the 34, 33 and a half yard line. Taking a lot of time, Ron, to run a play, get in the huddle, try to get that 25-second clock as close to zero as you can get when you snap the ball. Alabama with one timeout left. And 
Again, Deshaun Foster lines up as the man at the top of the eye. You can see he's about eight yards off the ball. They give it to him. Cannot bounce it to the outside. Good job for the Alabama defense. They'll clutch him after a gain of only a couple. But right now, the Bruins on tenth play of the drive. They need to take it down to the 18-yard line of Alabama. Put it in the stomach of Deshaun Foster. Going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Moorhead. Manuel White, I beg your pardon. It was Manuel White, 29, rather than Deshaun Foster, 26. So Griffith will come in. And they try to make it a 13 point ball game. With three minutes and 33 seconds on the clock, and now it's running. I wonder if they'll punt this football run or go ahead and kick the field goal. 53 yards is the attempt, and it is going to be a pooch kick. No, see, when you field goal, you line up for field goal, to Alabama doesn't send anybody back, so you pin them down inside the 10. Very well executed. Nice play by UCLA, and we'll take a timeout. 313 to play in the ball game. 20 to 10, UCLA. <laughs> Talking with uh, Paulie Dixon, thinking, hey, we have had trouble on the road, and particularly in opening games, and they got an opportunity to knock off a good football team in a very difficult spot. Watts going to be hit a couple of times, can't get away on the second attempt by Sean Phillips. Ron, I think this is an Alabama team that's improved. I think they played hard tonight. I, I think they're up against a really fine football team. I'm, I'm not making any excuses for Alabama. This UCLA team is loaded. And when you have 23 seniors, it tells you a little bit about your leadership. Well, Watts is shaken up, and Zao is going to come into the lineup. Andrew, the senior, out of Lake Butler, Florida. Last time that a team from California played a Crimson Tide team in the state of Alabama, Southern Cal, on September the 23rd, 1978 and the Trojans won that ball game 24 to 14. In fact, Alabama and USC shared the uh, national title that year. Zal rolls the pocket, throws it complete, and that's Triantis Luke. Dennis Francione Ron is the first Alabama coach in 70 years to open up his career in Tuscaloosa. The last Coach was 1931 Frank Thomas. And there'll be a lot of wins ahead for Alabama. Now they got the NCAA. Pretty good company, though. Yeah. Look. Pretty good. Abbott, Jimmy Whitworth, or Ears Whitworth, uh, Coach Bryant, and Gene Stallings. Ron, they've got the, uh, the NCAA investigation. Uh, they expect a letter either next week or the week after, and then. That can't become a distraction for the players on the field. It's a distraction for the fans and maybe for the coaches and administrators, but you can't let it that affect the football team. And I know Dennis Francione has kept his football team away from commenting right. on the NCAA proceedings. Right. In fact, his rule was that if you were asked a question about it, just say there's there's one source that has an answer on that, and it's it's the head coach. Please ask them to come to me. All right, there's some distant stairs right there, but as Mike said, and Mike's not making excuses because we had all talked after conference calls and visiting with coaches around that this UCLA team has a world of talent, and if they can get some things to come together, they're going to be very good, and they have shown it. They've displayed it here tonight. Zhao zips this one. Carter. Brian Kenny, let's check with you. Six catches, 104 yards in our game. Zhao gets by the rush of that defensive lineman. Now goes long and caught by Mellons, and he'll take it the distance. 71 yards. And a flag is down back at the 21-yard line. I don't know if it's for roughing the passer. I think it is. I think it's for roughing the passer. And uh, Andrew Zhao with a great throw. Her 
personal foul, roughing the passer. Touchdown. We will assess the penalty on the drive. So the penalty comes on the try. Ron, that's what Andrew Zhao can bring you to your football team. Deep throw down the field. Here he spreads out, takes the hit. Robert Thomas. Right to his helmet. Strength, to lower body strength, comes outside, throws to Freddie Mills. Freddie Mills never gave up on that route. Got good concentration in the end zone. Now, for all those people who went to the parking lot, shame on you. Extra point attempt is up, and it's good. Neil Thomas knocks it home. And with two minutes and 13 seconds left in this ball game, we have a three-point contest with an onside kick yeah. upcoming. We're an onside kick away from Alabama being right back in this football game. What a great concentration by Freddie Millens. And a great throw from Andrew Zhao. Here's the concentration from Millens. The freshman, Matt Ware, number 17, gets beat. Freddie Millens in the end zone. Andrew Zhao shaking up a little bit. Well, you know, Mike, when you're the head coach at Alabama, the, uh, the expectations are to win championships and win them now. The mission is clear here. Um, Alabama fans have high expectations and uh, I wanted to be a part uh, of this. I wanted to be where college football meant so much, where the Crimson Tide means so much to their fans, where tradition and pageantry and game day meant so much. I hope there'll be some understanding uh, at times, obviously, but uh, I wanted to be a part of this. I wanted to coach where Coach Bryant coached and where Coach Stallings coached and, and where college football was so important. Coach Fran yesterday visiting with us. Now here comes what everybody would anticipate. Lane Bearden with an onside kick. Bangs it into the turf. In the air. That's what you're looking for. It is loose. UCLA ball, 2.07 to play. Ron, that's exactly what you wanted. The, the ball to bounce up when and your defenders get down there, tip it, and uh, have a shot for it. Yuramia Stansberry, who scored his first career touchdown tonight, the uh, fullback on the special teams, is the man who wound up on it. This is what you're talking about. The high bound. See, that was Tad Perry who went up and it came right off his shoulder pads, off his chest. And a player down for Alabama away from the uh, away from the crowd that uh, we had not seen. Naughton McKay Lozier is the man who shake it up. situation one timeout Alabama they can stop the clock with the UCLA offense one time UCLA has a couple but they don't want to call timeout they want that two minutes and seven seconds to get on off the clock as quickly as possible Deshaun Foster blocker in front Great pursuit. He's going to be hit and knocked down, and it was Jared Johnson who caught him to the ankles and stopped him short. Now, if you're UCLA, you lay on the ground. Alabama's got one timeout left. You lay on the ground if you're a running back. Get up real slow. Use as much time as you can. Mike, if you're Alabama, when do you call the timeout? Do you do it after this play? Or after you've stopped them on third? I think after the third down play. After the third down play. We'll look. You see, the play clock is down to 10, and they'll use every bit of that that they can. 90 seconds left in their ball game. Boss 
Foster running into some tough traffic. You can see Rasheed trying to strip him of the football. Clock continues to run. They're going to use it right now, Ron. Going to use it now to call the timeout and stop the clock with 1.14 to play. And there is a commercial break on the way. Alabama. Freddie Middleton's on the sideline who had the home run touchdown just a moment ago to put the Crimson Tide back in this one. Perry in motion. And Foster. Nowhere to run. Gerald Dixon makes the stop, and now the Crimson Tide will get the football back. But you can be sure of one thing. UCLA is going to wait and get a delay of game penalty before they snap this punt. They want to use every second off that clock that they can legally. And I don't believe I'd kick it to Freddie Millens either. <laughs> He'd have to field it in the stadium steps. Yeah, 11 seconds, now 10 seconds on the play clock, and UCLA's not even huddled it. They're going to go ahead and take the penalty to run off everything. I think they're going to they call can. a timeout with uh, two seconds left. Oh, okay. All right. 28 seconds on the clock, and they call a timeout. Tyler Watts. Talking it over with the coaches, you can see Zhao, and he is still shaken up. I, yeah, I think when he got hurt. hit in the head, and and it, in defense of a, a middle linebacker Robert Thomas, he was just coming after him, and they their heads collided. I don't think he was trying to hit him with a head high tackle, but obviously there's some cobwebs because Watts is uh, is going to come on the field now for tonight's monster play of the game. UCLA on offense and Tab Perry. Watch what happens on this play. The wheel route, and he's left alone. And this youngster can really move on down the field, and he takes it for the touchdown, 53 yards, and that, the monster play of the night. Corey Paws can now only stand on the sideline and wait and hope that his teammates can get 28 seconds off the clock and keep Alabama off the scoreboard. I'll be shocked if he keeps this ball in play unless he knocks it out of the end zone. I'll be shocked if he don't kick it up the stadium steps. Eighth play of the drive and they come after it. And he does kick it away from Miller. It's going to hit at the 10. Oh my goodness. Takes a UCLA bounce and goes out of bounds at the 10-yard line. 45 yards on the kick, but bigger than that, no return. Ron, the other monster play was the fourth down and yeah. a half yard going You're right. for the fourth and a half yard. Not taking the field, goal, going for the fourth down, and a great play by Manning, the corner, keeping the running back from Alabama from getting the first down. Zal does not look like he's uh, on top of his game right now. Kind of squinting. Still sitting on the bench after throwing that touchdown pass to Millens. So it'll be Tyler Watts who will direct the attack for the final 21 seconds. Ray Hudson is the tailback. Pressure is on and it is hook and ladder. And ladder back to Hudson and he's caught by the jersey and dragged out of bounds. Old San Diego Charger play. Little hook and ladder. Right in Winslow and uh, used it well. Freddie Millens, a former high school quarterback, pitches the ball out to Hudson, a former defensive back, and almost breaks loose. And when he did a good job of fielding that ball, it was about to hit the ground. Sports Center coming up next. We got 14 seconds left in this one, though. Crimson Tide trying to pull off a miracle. Watch steps up. He is hit, and the ball is thrown a little bit short, I believe, to Hudson. Yep, they say incomplete. And Watts took quite a shot. Zhao is already down over on the far sideline. See, Ron, when you run your quarterback, as many times as he's run tonight, he's taken a, a physical beating. And after the throws, he's been hit several times. And the number three quarterback. He doesn't want to have to come in with nine seconds left under these circumstances. Twenty-two 
to 17. UCLA should be the final play of the game, and this one's just thrown up for grabs. It is knocked down by Ricky Manning Jr. and two seconds left on the clock. Ricky Manning is really Heisman finalist, it certainly would appear. A guy of his quality. Watch. Tipped in the air, knocked away. Marcus Anderson making the play, and this ball game is over. So the final score, UCLA 20, Alabama 17. Coming up next is Sports Center. And for stats, quotes, and a full recap of this game, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And now for Adrian Carson and Mike Gottfried, Ron Franklin saying so long from Tuscaloosa.